Are you looking for ideas for using your 6x8 pattern paper without making scraps? Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here to help you make the most of your crafty supplies in time. So let's get making. Today I have sketch number 14 for 6x8 paper on A2 size cards. So that means there's 13 other sketches that show you how to use 6x8 paper to make A2 size cards without scraps. However, there's 50 ideas for using 6x6 paper on A2 size cards. There's ideas for 12x12 paper, for A2 5x7. There's ideas for all kinds of different combinations over at JessCrafts.com. Today we're just going to focus on this particular one. Now this one may seem familiar to you for a couple of reasons. One, it's not that different than sketch number 13. Sketch number 13 is basically just missing this circle. And the reason I wanted to share this variation with you is because it is such a substantial amount of space that cutting out this circle is a significant change and there's room for it. But I wanted to share them as two separate ideas because it's really hard to convey two ideas in a single template and there are usually many ways you can use them. And then the other thing is it might look familiar because it was part of SBC Fest. So this was like one of the sketch variants and one of the ways I explained that you could um, my, like, you know, one of the sketches you could use in the class. So if it seems familiar, that's where it's from, but I do like to separate them all out into ideas for those who really like to keep all of their sketches organized, and because you may not have seen one or the other, but I will leave you a link to SPC Fest, and it's coming back this September, which are free classes from scrapbook.com. And I'm going to be using a lot of scrapbook.com products today because I love scrapbook.com. They have this cozy pattern collection. I love fall. Also, I'm sorry if I sound like a little nasally. I'm getting over some kind of summer cold right now. Um, so it has some very distinctly fall paper, but then it also has paper that's just like in pretty kind of fall colors and this palette, very cozy as the name suggests, but they don't have to be used for fall. And I really like a pattern paper pack that can be used for a season, but has some stuff outside of that because rarely do I need the entire paper pad to be seasonal. I picked this one because it is seasonal and I'm in the mood to be making fall cards. It has a backside, so these are double-sided paper, but the, the backside is solid. And I like having that option, especially when I'm gonna do something like I am today where I'm going to cut one shape out of the center of the paper and use that. So the nature of what I do with these templates where I make no scraps means that often I'm cutting different rectangles um, maybe triangles and it might not be obvious how you can use your dies alongside my sketches. Now I think and I argue you can definitely like once you have that basic layout you can go to town adding all kinds of things on top of it. If you like to color images you can absolutely do that with my sketches because it's just giving you a hey here's where all the pattern paper goes and then you add some variation on top of it but I do like to kind of show explicitly how I would use dies and no scrap at the same time. So I'm going to cut this from 6 by 8 to six by four. Then I'm going to cut it at five and a quarter, which will leave me this piece that's four by three and a quarter. And then that's gonna become a strip along the card. And we'll talk about mats as well for this. Now, this is the basic card. And so I'll cut this one here too, to five and a quarter. And this particular sketch does not call for very many mats at all. It asks for a mat to go behind this piece but because this piece is solid I don't really think that it needs it at all so I'm gonna probably skip that today but the other thing that this calls for is for you to cut a shape out of this area of the card now there are a couple ways that you can do this I'm gonna do it with floral dies today, even though the sketch shows a circle because you don't, you definitely just don't need to use a circle. And when you're doing something like this, I highly suggest doing it with layering dies so that if you do want to cut a second, um, like if you wanna cut a mat for this piece, you can just use the next die in the size up. And this is a floral die, so these are not like exactly, um, proportional the way circles would be or there's also these circle dies in the center and I absolutely could just cut one of these out but I'm gonna go with two layers of flour. 
when you are cutting, when you're die cutting out the one from pattern paper. So this is the one for the mat, and this is the one I'm gonna cut out of the pattern paper. I suggest putting the die on the side of the pattern paper that is going to be showing. So in this case, I actually want the solid paper to be what gets layered on top of the mat. So I am going to cut, put the cutting side down on the solid side of the pattern paper. Hopefully that was clear on you know what that, that explanation of why I choose which side. This mat will also mean that I don't have to perfectly center it. If I were going to die cut this out and then fit it right back in, I want to make sure that it's centered. This is going to give me a little bit of wiggle room and we'll talk more about that in a moment. So the reason I suggest cutting that out of the side you want is because, and this is going to be a little bit hard to see, but sometimes um, the back side is going to get some impressions from a, a particularly a really well-worn die cutting plate. Um, or even here you can see there's a little bit of like a white where it got kind of pressed into the plate and it's just like a little bit imperfect. It definitely looks like the back side of a die or the back side of a die cut piece. So put your die on the side that you want to be showing in the end product. Now you can see I can fit this right back into here because this is a die that's like symmetrical um, and it looks fine but it doesn't really stand out. So that is why I'm going to go for having the mat on these especially because it, I didn't really need a lot of matting today, so I decided to pull in the fall into autumn metallic paper pad. I have used this in a couple of videos already, so I thought, well, why not share even more ideas and ways that I would use it? And so I can tape all of these layers together. Because this paper isn't terribly thick, you can probably just tape this paper right down to it, but because this here, the metallic, is a thin layer, you might find that it, when you put the pressure into it, you'll start seeing the pressed outline of that hole underneath. If that happens, what you can do is kind of prop things up with a little bit of cardstock as well, or you can even die cut that same shape out of a scrap piece of paper, layer it back in, and then add this shape on top. It all depends on how absolutely smooth and streamlined you want everything to be. I picked this Hello from a scrapbook.com exclusive die set. I often prefer to buy dies that have some kind of outline choice. So some way of like layering it together so that the sentiment can be really bold. Because I like to work with so much pattern paper, sometimes I need that matte or separating layer between them. And this die set does have that option. But in this instance, when I went to test it out, I actually thought it really stood out pretty nicely already, especially when you move it to catch the light. And so it did not need its shadow dye, but that is available. In fact, I actually thought you kind of captured more detail by not adding another color there, because I think if I did a um, matte around it, like I did the outline part of the dye, I'd have to probably introduce a whole new, like, piece of paper and possibly color into the whole thing and you would actually see less of the floral design that it is adhered to at the moment. The other thing that I recently was using was the fall into autumn. Um, and I was using the collection in general but there were some washi tapes with it and I thought well this might be also a good time because I have this mostly solid strip here to add a secondary pattern. This is like a um, another leaf pattern, but it's a little bit awkward because it's not much bigger than that. And then I didn't know if that was a little too busy. I'll fix that later. There is this plaid pattern, which again is about the same width, but I think it would be a way of adding an, an additional pattern into the situation. And it's much more subtle. So I do like that one quite a bit. And then there's also this really thin solid washi, which I think is great. I think this um, strip down here is also a great opportunity to add a sentiment if you're putting an image on the top. So instead of putting your sentiment here, you can put your sentiment down here and put an image up there. So I think in, this, in the spirit of using some washi, because I have a tendency to pick it up, get it as part of a collection, a kit, etc. And then it just sort of, 
I use it a few times. I use it to seal envelopes pretty often, just for a little extra decorative touch, but I forget to use it like in the actual card making process. So I've left it out on my desk for a few days so that maybe when I'm making a few more fall cards, I would remember that it's there and come up with another idea or two to incorporate it. Then I'll add my adhesive back on. As you can see, the, like the um, color is showing through quite a bit. So it kind of gives that washy a slightly different look, but I think it was a great way of incorporating a little bit more supplies and a little bit of more pattern and interest to the card. If um, I didn't make it clear earlier, you can get this template for download so you can add it to a binder so you don't forget the idea. Um, it'll be the first link in the video description below. And if you found this video helpful, Here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template or tutorial. And check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.